grace and peace to you this Palm Sunday, April 5th, 2020. So this is one of the few times in the year when we have two gospel readings um, many years ago and when it was much more common for all businesses to be closed on Good Friday all day or at least half of the day. People heard most of the story of the last week of Jesus's life that day. And now we have Palm Passion Sunday, which um, continues on with the happenings for the rest of the week. So because of our uh, situation with the whole nation right now, where so many people are either not working or working from home or things along those lines, we have a little bit more time to spend on the story of Palm Sunday itself today as well. So I do encourage you to consider the, um, looking at this story first and Pastor Jim is going to be um, telling the passion story. So, um, and so today is the story of what happened on that day when Jesus entered Jerusalem about a Sunday before, about one week before, that first Easter Sunday. And so this reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning um, in the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and they had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what had been written and spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and a colt, the foal of the donkey. The disciples did and went as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put the cloaks over them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered the city, all of Jerusalem was in a turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth from Galilee.
So what a glorious entry into the most holy of cities our Lord Jesus experienced that day. Nowhere in this passage is much of a hint of what's to come just a few days later. People are following this man named Jesus who has been preaching and teaching and even working miracles of healing the blind and raising the dead. Here is their hero, the son of David. At this point, there seem to be two groups of crowds that are surrounding Jesus. The first, it seems to be people who have joined Jesus and the disciples along the way, who have seen his miracles and heard his teaching. The other crowd is a crowd from the city, a city that the scripture tells us is now in a lot of turmoil largely because someone was coming in and when it comes down to it, was causing quite a disturbance. Jesus arriving on a donkey is a sign of exactly the type of Messiah that we have been learning that Jesus is. He is not an earthly king with gold and riches and power, but a Messiah with a heart for service and with humility. So there's a long tradition as well of Jesus's mother Mary also riding on the donkey when the family travels. Although, interestingly enough, this tradition comes from another document that didn't even make it into the Bible. But once again, we see that while he has the right to every comfort imaginable, being the worker of miracles, the son of God, the foretold Messiah and King, he chooses instead to be humble and one of the people, one of us. A great many things will happen in the next few days of Jesus's life, but in this moment, for this day and this entry into this most ho holy city, he is honored and praised. The people shout hosannas and praises, and only days later, they will be shouting, crucify him. So one of the things that I've been wondering is that would I end up being one of the ones shouting, crucify him? Or would I be one of the ones shouting the hosannas? I think that I can say that all of us would rather be identified with someone like St. Peter than with someone like Judas the betrayer. And yet we'll even hear that St. Peter wasn't always so perfect with his allegiance. Sometimes I wonder what happened to the crowds that were following Jesus into the city. Where were they later? What made them change their mind? Were they hiding? Or had they been turned to the other side of the argument? Were those shouting Hosanna on Palm Sunday the same ones shouting crucify him on Friday? It's difficult to say, and the scripture doesn't tell us. Either way, I like to think that there is a lesson for us here. There are times when every Christian finds themselves praising God, shouting the hosannas to Christ and waving our palm branches in celebration of our God. And there are times when each of us fail to remain steadfast who switch sides and start to shout, crucify him, who hide from God, who hide from God's people out of fear or anxiety, who deny that we know Jesus at a moment when it might be most needed. We are all the ones shouting Hosanna and we are all the ones shouting, crucify him. The life of a Christian on this earth is one of 
already, but not yet. In good Lutheran fashion, we exist in this perpetual in-between where we are both sinner and saint at the same time. We are both shouting Hosanna and crucify him at the same time. In this most holy week of the year, we learn the most about who we are. We are deeply worshipful and praising children of God. And we are rebellious traitors who crucify our own savior. And during this most holy week of the year, we learn so much, maybe the most about who God is. God is the one who comes among us, who lives among us and becomes one of us. God loves us so much that God was willing to die a human death. And not to get too far ahead in the story, but God is also the one who conquers death once and for all. This, the most holy week of the Christian year, is one for learning who God really is and who we really are as God's children. Let it be so. And so I invite you to pray with me to the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in glorious victory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Last night I lay asleep, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, I thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer rang. I thought the voice of angels from heaven an answer rang Jerusalem Jerusalem lift up your gates and sing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna to your King I thought my dream was changed, the streets no longer rang. Hushed were the glad hosannas, the little children sang. The sun grew dark with mystery, the morn was cold and chill. As the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill. As the shadow of a cross arose upon a lonely hill. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, hark how the angels sing. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to your King.
And once again the scene was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open wide, and all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of moon or stars by night, or sun to shine by day, it was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, sing for the night is o'er. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna forevermore. Hosanna in the highest. 